So uh, just a, a couple of quick introductions. Uh, as I said, my name is Martin Flood. I know most, if not all, of you that are on the call today, so we've probably met. I'm the manager of business development for GOQ Corporation. I'm going to be joined today by my uh, colleague, uh, Derek Wagg. Again, most of you know Derek, have met Derek. He's the manager of our uh, support services, and if you've had any training in the last couple of years, you've probably received it from, from Derek. Uh, of course, we're with GeoQ Corporation, and we're going to be focusing primarily on GeoQ software and tools today. We'll use a little bit of Terrasol for our demos, as, as we always do. And for those of you who are um, attending from within North America, U.S. and Canada, of course, we're your TerraSolid reseller as well. So before I toss it over to Derek, let me just kind of set the stage a little bit in terms of, you know, when we talk about reporting tools, uh, what, what are we talking about and, and kind of where do they fit into what we, uh, you know, what we want to do with GeoQ. There are, uh, there have been a couple of reporting tools in GeoQ for several releases now. Uh, project dashboard, which is something at the GOQ Federator level. It's not something we're going to cover today because we haven't really, there's, there's nothing new in it in this, this release. Uh, and a couple of you are using that, I see from the list. It, you know, it's really intended as a high-level project summary, breaking your projects down into phases. You know, is all my manual editing complete? Uh, has all these tiles been shipped? That kind of thing. It's really designed and intended for senior managers, uh, essentially people that are not GOQ savvy users. It's web-based. You don't have to go into the GOQ client. You don't have to know what a working set is, all that kind of stuff. So, so that's the high-level reporting tool. The reporting tool we're going to look at today and the, where we put in some new features is the project administrator. Project administrator has been around for a while. It's, it runs within GOQ, within the GOQ client, and it's really aimed at sort of task level, which of course tends to be checklist step level uh, details of your projects, summaries and statistics by entity. And it's really intended for someone who is working in GOQ on a daily basis, but probably more in a, a lead role, a project manager, a team lead, or a production supervisor. Someone needs to keep track of who's working on what, how much time is it taking, how much have I got completed, as opposed to a frontline technician who might be just focusing on, you know, what tile do I need to edit now, what product do I need to to generate. So we've had this project administrator tool for a while and you were always able to extract some information from that but we, we realized you know there's there's a an underlying issue in uh, it's not just the mapping industry this is a very general issue uh, you know some of you are probably quite aware of I mean spreadsheets are used everywhere by everybody they are the reporting tool of choice in many many industries but when you really look at it, they really are a poor substitute for any kind of situation where you, you really need a real relational database, which is essentially what you have with GeoQ. When you've got so much information being tracked about what you're doing and what the status of things are, that a spreadsheet just doesn't scale very well. It doesn't have the real rigorous kind of reporting and relational database type tools and querying that you really need to get an accurate, timely report on on what's going on. So, you know, if you are using GeoQ, you have that database. You're, you're running on top of SQL Server. You have a, a, a live SQL database that's tracking all your production uh, history for you. So, of course, what we want to do is really find ways to let you link with the spreadsheet reporting that you're more comfortable with, that you may be using already as part of your, your management reporting or providing information to upper management or within the team for, for tracking status. And that's some of what you're going to see today, uh, what, what Derek's going to demonstrate, some of the new features we've put in to be able to generate these more spreadsheet-like reports, but pulling information from your GOQ database. And one, um, one last slide before I toss it over to, to Derek. You know, we did a, a poll, and we we're obviously, you know, we talked to everybody uh, uh, just on a, uh, as often as we can because we always want to get information about how people are using GeoQ. And we're finding that while some of you are using some of the project management tools and the project management metrics in GeoQ, not everybody is aware of them. Not everybody takes advantage of some of those features or functions in GeoQ. So I just did kind of want to just refresh you, and for those of you that may not be familiar with these, when we talk about management metrics, project management, reporting, all that kind of stuff. What are we talking about in GeoQ? If you look at 
a checklist step in GeoQ, which is a task. So here I've got, you know, the very standard, do some editing in TerraScan, process in TerraScan. You're probably very familiar with looking at the history of that, you know, tracking what was done when. But there is also a collection of project management metrics, and you can see those on the management tab in the checklist step details, where we track all of the, you can think of it as metadata about that task. And it's many of the standard kind of uh, data fields that you would want to track in any kind of project management system or database tracking system. So I can assign a particular person, a planned user, to a task. I can assign a start date, an end date. I can assign budgets. Then as people are working on those tasks, GOQ will track the actual start dates, percent completes. So they'll track their actual hours against budgeted hours. If you're having your folks enter estimates to complete when they come out of tasks and they haven't finished them, it'll give you that real-time tracking of you know, what your team is estimating it's going to take to complete. And some of the other you know, metrics like variance and, and so on and so forth. These are all very important uh, project metrics to kind of track and, and be aware of. And project administrators, uh, as Derek is going to show, will let you look at that and compile some of that in a, in a meaningful way. The idea being we want to try to be able to present the information to you in a way that's that's accurate, it's very timely, and it allows you to make better informed decisions on a daily or weekly basis as to how to how to manage your uh, production. Uh, you know, for example, on this I can see that this this editing was assigned to assigned to Martin Flood back in February and it hasn't even started yet. So so clearly he's slacking off and not doing his work. But with that, let me um, toss it over to Derek here. So I got to pick up kind of where Martin left off and just uh, look at. I've got this project loaded here. It's just a little training project that I set up. Uh, same one we were working in uh, last week when I was showing you the direct drive functionality. Uh, we were directly driving the terror skin. And uh, so if I look at you know one of these entities, what you'll, what you'll see in, in my checklist step details, uh, I've got my terror and running terror scan step selected here, which is my direct drive step, and I can see my checklist history. And this is, this is one of those things that you just get from running things through GeoQ. So besides the data management tools, the production tools that are incorporated in the GeoQ and that a lot of users are using GeoQ in order to process your LiDAR data or other types of data with, the other aspect that you get is this tracking mechanism. You get the management aspects of it because you actually see what's being done when it's being done. And so we're automatically tracking everything that happens. And various notes are in here, system messages are in here, start and end times, and of course, durations. Um, so all that rolled up the status is what's going to allow us to compare to that management tab uh, of information that Martin uh, was talking about earlier. So you can see here in this case where I've got this particular one set up. You know, uh, if you remember last week, I was setting them to automatically uh, at one point uh, to suspend the, the tiles instead of completing them and set a certain percent complete and you know, say maybe I was the first user in a tile and I was just doing one part of, of many tasks that need to be done and said here this is the percentage that's now done. So all the estimates can kind of be based on that actual effort that was expended and then you could uh, roll that up and figure out what's the EGC for each particular tile. So one of the things that's always you know, bin is that GQ records this information, but of course you don't want to have to sit here and click on each individual tile and add up numbers. Um, you don't want to even have to go in and count uh, the tiles that are completed versus the tiles that are suspended. All that takes quite a bit of time, especially when you start talking, you know, tens of thousands of entities that you're working with in a project. So you need some way to extract that information. So project administrator is a tool um, it's on your on your setup find it in there. And this is actually the, the third iteration of Project Administrator. Um, I believe it's the third one since we started. Um, each one's got progressively better. If anybody remembers back from the original release of Project Administrator, uh, if you had any real project and you tried to look at it, you, uh, you were pretty, pretty much SOL because that, that project of hundreds of thousands of entities would take hours to load in the Project Administrator. So most people abandoned kind of that aspect uh, years ago. Um, and really trying to show people that in, in the intermediate years, a lot of changes have gone into this. And one of the major things we've done is be able to filter because you don't need to load everything for a project just 
you know, in order to get some of this information out, what you already know, kind of what belongs, uh, you know, that what pieces of the project have the information that are going to correspond with the information you desire. So, you know, uh, the last iteration already had this this filter capabilities. It, it looks very similar to when you're going to an entity manager because it was the same kind of concept, and it was actually built into entity manager at that time. So. What I could do here is I can just link it into my layer that I've got selected. I'm going to load that up. And so since it's just linked to my layer, you know, I'm loading up things just in a selected state. It doesn't matter whether another user is moving in and out, whatever the case happens to be. I'm kind of grabbing this report as we go. So it used to be that you just pull this up and, and it brings up Entity Manager and you had a few extra columns because you've got Project Administrator. Talking to users, we found out there was a lot more that they were needing from that, a lot more control and a lot more uh, ability to basically set something up that they could repetitively use. So that led us to this iteration, which was to design a report builder. Um, and the report builder would allow us to then go in and make modifications to the types of reports we're going to generate and pull out. So the first time you actually go to run this, you're going to see you don't have any reports. So you're going to need to actually build a report. Uh, in this particular case, I'm in the report builder mode already. And so what we're going to do is have a look at, at kind of how to build this report. Um, what I want to do is, is cancel out of that mode. So here, here's when we're not in report builder mode. You'll see you don't have any of the setup information. What I've got is just a standard report that I've set up and an ability to kind of pull the information for that if I run the, the refresh, which will extract based on my time period. So like I said, I want to start with the report builder because anybody first uh, going into your GFU, you're going to have to build a report. So when we turn on report builder, it's going to bring us up this little dialogue. It's going to say, you know, what are we doing? We're creating a new report. Are we building off of a, another one? Uh, all those sorts of things. So the options here is we're going to create this new report. Um, so this is going to be my, my webinar edit report. And that brings me in now my, my, uh, into my report builder mode. And in my report builder mode, what I have is my list of entities. Um, those are the ones that I've said, this is the ones I want to filter off of just to be able to pull my report from. And, you know, that could have been one layer, multiple layers. So, you know, there's all kinds of variety of choices there when you're going in. But basically, it's rolled up and it's looked through all those entities that I've had. And it's given me the checklist that belong to those entities. So in this case here, you're lucky everything's got the same checklist which is good because it makes things a lot easier to work with. And I need to find my checklist step that I want to use or checklist steps. And so in this case, I'm going to use my edit and running terror scan and my process terror scan. Those are the two steps that I've kind of worked with. So what that's done is I've added those in automatically um, into my report. So there's two columns now added into here. And now for each of those steps, I need to pick the information that I want to look at. So I've got the capability here to look at two different types of information. One is parameter information and the other one is user information. So parameter information is going to be kind of those metrics that we're looking for. And so I can look in here and say, well, I'd like to look at you know, the, the budgeted effort. So I'm going to turn the budgeted effort on. You see it auto-populates into the, into the uh, report. Since I do that, I want to turn on my, my actual effort. And let's go ahead and look at, uh, we'll put the actual start date on there too. And then we'll put in the, uh, the percent variance. So this just gives us a little bit of, you know, the standard information that you're usually wanting to find. And so if I were to run this on, on the report, I would get the information. So I'm going to just go ahead and save this report as it is, just to be able to pull uh, the extracted information out. Save that report, and I'm going to run that, and I'm just going to run it on all dates. So basically, looking all back through time for this project, and here's the information that that's pulled down. So I've gone and done the pulling of the database to figure out, you know, what is all this individual times. The background coloration that you see is the status information. So you can see which which entities are complete, which ones are in progress, the ones that are in error. Um, and the ones that haven't been started yet. So it gives you an idea of just what those look like. You can see here uh, that we've just I've just taken and just pulled that particular entity for the 
all the effort, the uh, the start date for that particular entity, um, you know, the variance, which is going to be uh, the difference between the percent wise between your budget effort and the actual effort, and then um, you know, like I said, it's just kind of pulled out for each individual step, right? So a lot of times that's okay, and that was something we could pull before, uh, not quite as easy as it is now, but it was there, um, you know, now we can roll up across uh, multiple steps if we wanted to and get a, an effort uh, for the com combination of all those steps together. But the other thing we can do is go back into Report Builder. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to modify that current report, and now I'm going to add in users. So I can either, I can do one or two things. I can auto-select users. And GQ is going to go through and figure out who has worked on this particular project and these particular entities that I've got selected in my, in my uh, project administrator at the time. Uh, you know, that's great if, if you've already got all your users have worked on it. Of course, um, at the point, it's my, my laptop that I carry around, so it's just me. Uh, but if I wanted to look at, you know, additional users, I can go in here and add the additional users in. Say they, you know, they, I plan to use these users in this project at some point. And you're going to see now for each, uh, each particular step, I'm going to be able to see the information for each individual user who's ever gone into that step. So any, any of those users that's launched that step and worked within that project, which means now that a step can represent actually more than one thing if you really wanted it to because you could have the capability to extract that that percentage of the effort that was required uh, by you know, your junior analyst and then that percentage that was required by the senior analyst to go in there and review what the junior analyst did. So it gives you that ability to do that and not necessarily have to have a separate step for doing that. Um, again, it's going to pull up our, our, our total combined actual effort and it's going to give us the individual users on each of those. So with having made those changes, uh, I'm going to save my report and refresh that to uh, make sure I've pulled all the information out. Okay. Alright, so what it's doing is, is giving us that information that's pulled for all the users um, a, or each of the individual entities. Um, now, of course, the question comes, you know, well, where does this budgeted effort actually come from? How do we set those management things that we're going to compare against? So what we need to do is in anything in GQ, if you want to make a change to anything, you've got to add it to your working set, right? So I'm going to take and just uh, add my first one in here into the working set. And I'm going to say, oh, my budget effort actually for this project should have been 0.2. And there's my, my effort. So. All right, that's all well and good, but we don't want to have to go through each and every entity and do that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to copy that to my clipboard, and I'm going to now take and I'm going to select all the rows in my project. So these are all the entities I've loaded. Um, that adds them to my working set, and now I can go into these and add in the budgeted effort. The ones in gray, I, I if you've noticed here, there are certain ones that are grayed out. The checklist step doesn't apply to them, and these are uh, non-processing, uh, or sorry, non-graphic entities. Uh, in this particular case, it's a, a layer that I've been working on with our with our new versioning tools, and so we've got to track, uh, you know, the history information that gets tracked in those non-graphic. So that's just a, a quick little aside. So I'm just going to select these columns that actually aren't grayed out, so they're applicable here. I could also filter by the entity type, and that would help me see that as well. Um, so if I just filter and just give me just the LAS working segments, there we go. That makes things a little bit cleaner in the view. Right. So I've selected the rows I want. Uh, remember, I copied that point to, and now I can do a control V and paste that in there. So we left the little instructions at the top here, uh, just to remind you what you need to do to edit a cell and to copy and, and paste. So it's, it's similar to working with Excel directly. Um, we're able to put that information in. Now, if you notice, as the information populated, all the things that get affected by that, so obviously it's not going to change your, your actual effort, but what it's going to change is your percent variance. So we're going to see that in here. Okay. So that's, that's how we do it. Edit, uh, you use the same kind of tools if you want to assign particular users to, to blocks as well. 
do the same sort of thing. So one of the things I can look at as well, um, not only looking at all time, I can say, well, just what's been worked on uh, within a certain date range. Um, so I can say, well, give me everything that's been worked on um, say this week, but they're probably going to be one entity in here. And you're going to get the updated numbers. And what changes is your actual effort extraction. We can still pull all the same information out of everything else, but we just use the actual effort. So you're going to see in here, uh, I've only opened one of these blocks. Uh, actually, it looks like I've opened two of these blocks today. So those are the ones that have actual information uh, included in them. Uh, at any point in time, I could say, well, just filter you know, I can do a custom filter now that says, you know, find me the actual entities or actual effort uh, that is greater than zero. And there I'm filtered down. And you notice the whole time that I'm working with this report, I've got this summary information at the bottom. So if this is the information I was just trying to extract, you know, where am I at just with this stuff this week and, it, you know, not the previous week's information, I'm now at that point. I can export that into Excel. All right. so here's my uh, report this week. I can type. And now I can open that one. Excel, and there is the extraction of all the information that was in GEQ is now in your Excel sheet. So the idea here is you want to build a report that is ordered and, and reflects the information that you want to be tracking kind of on a regular basis so that you can dump out these reports at whatever set time that you want them to be and drop them into your overall management tool, reporting tools that you're using. So if you wanted to graph this, if you wanted to track it over time, uh, you were looking at comparing one week versus another, uh, one project versus another, whatever you're trying to do with kind of your standard reporting, uh, you know, Excel spreadsheets, we're trying to give you a way to set up this standardized report that every time you go to run the report, you can dump that information. Um, and we do include this summary information as well, so you don't have to recalculate that uh, when you dump it out to Excel. It's already in there. So I manually set this budgeted effort, um, but the other way you can set that budgeted effort, and this has been in there for, for a couple of builds now, is actually an environment builder. If we look in the checklists themselves, you know, a lot of the times when you're looking at something like um, you know, ground editing, uh, you're, you're doing that as some multiplier of area. And so if I scroll over here into my, my green area, uh, this is going to allow me to turn on for a particular step. I can say, you know, for my edit and terror scans, and running terror scans in my direct drive, I can say, do it as a multiplier where, you know, my auto budgeting it out as, you know, it's a one hour per, per square, uh, square mile. And that would allow, when I create an entity and assign it this checklist, it will calculate the area that's contained by that entity. Um, and figure out uh, if I'm supposed to be one hour per square mile, if this thing's a quarter square mile, then it should only have a budgeted effort of a quarter of an hour. Uh, so there's that way to kind of auto set this so you don't even have to go through that manual effort that I did in the PA. Now, you know, a lot of times you have different types of areas, different things going on, but using the same checklist. So that's why this isn't always the, the only way you can do it. And that's why we give you that, that option within PA to actually go in here and, and set your individual information. So one of the things I can do is I can go ahead and uh, just close out of my environment builder. Close out of my fraud and my, uh, my PA for right now. So I'm going to go into here, and I'm just going to uh, uh, name my uh, my quick launch, my direct drive step. And I'm going to go here and collect a, uh, some more information on a few of these. So this is where I'm just 
launching this into, into my uh, terror scan. And I've actually got it, uh, or actually had my micro station sitting up. Uh, so here I'm just moving through it. So if you remember last week here, I was showing how we just got to move from block to block. And it's automatically taking and setting that information for me as we go through here. And again, like I mentioned last week, it has actually loaded into TerraScan a, a lot quicker than what you see it in the, in the map view itself. So there's, there's my, uh, you know, I collected uh, three more blocks on there. I'm going to go ahead and, and close out of that particular block. So I'm going to just turn on, well, turn on this guy and just say, you know, let's uh, finish this edit. So let's go ahead and remove him as well so he gets set to complete. So now I can go back into my project administrator. Again, looking at that working segment layer. I've got my report, so I don't need to go set anything up because my report's already been built. Here's my webinar edit report that I set up previously. So what I'm going to say is I want to go in and I want to refresh this report looking at this time range of just this week. And now here's my information, and it's pulled out that actual effort on that running in TerraScan step uh, that's been done just this week. So remember we looked at it before, again, with that custom where we say give me anything that's greater than zero. And I only had a couple of them. Now here's my additional ones that are in there as well. Okay. So the other thing we could add to this report is, you know, a lot of times you want to do these based on what's been done, not necessarily just on a time frame. So I can see the status of entities because I can see the coloration in the background on them. And in particular, like we've got the fall time. So I can see all of the information, and what I'm going to do is go back into Report Builder, modify this report, and one more thing I'm going to add in here is the status. So I can't filter by the background, but what I can do is I can add a status column in, save that report, and now with that status column in, I can say, well, just give me the ones that have been completed. And now there's my counts for anything that I've done in this project to date and, and with my completion set. So you can see that the tools for, for pulling your information are, is a lot more, uh, a lot more fluid, uh, gives you a lot more options, a little bit more detail into what you're pulling out of here. Um, the other thing we've added in as well is the ability, you know, a lot of times what happens is you leave something up and running. Somebody forgets to close something out, and what's happened in the past is that totally skews all of your metrics because you've got this one block that's just been running for 24 hours, and you know that that much effort hasn't been applied to it. So what we did is we gave you the ability to actually do an edit on that. So as administrator in here, you can open up your report, and you can add in your history column. I'm just going to add my history column into these steps, and go ahead and save that report. This particular case, I don't have any that are uh, are major, uh, large, but I've got a couple that are really small. Um, I'm just going to go in here and I can look at the history. What that does is it brings up that history of the step, okay. and I can see here that oh, this one completed and it took me 15 seconds to complete. Uh, you know, I'm going to do it the opposite way here, uh, because I haven't actually left one up and running for for overnight. If you had one that was running overnight, you'd probably go minimize it. But in this case, I'm actually going to say, well, there's no way that took 15 seconds. I can edit this step where I can say, no, that duration should have actually been, you know, this one was a lot larger, and this one should have taken, you know, 15 minutes to complete. And, um, uh, maybe maybe GUQ went down. Not that that ever happens. Um, so I'm putting the, uh, the actual adjusted time in there as to when it really was completed. And what it does is it's going to record, you know, not only the change, but like everything else we do in GQ, we record it as a history. So you'll see here the old duration, the new duration uh, that was modified by me. Uh, so you can see there the time and date when it got modified and all the information as to what got modified. So that gets tracked as well so that you're not losing the fact that you had something that was auto-recorded, uh, but, but it gives you the added power of being able to go in there and correct 
those time records, uh, time records that were incorrect. So now if I go look at that tile, remember it was you know, fractions of a second on there, and now you can see my actual effort here on this tile about you know, 15 minutes, we were about a quarter of an hour on that tile. So hopefully these will give you, you know, a, a new suite of tools to be able to kind of extract all this information that's being recorded automatically by GeoQ and be stored in the SQL database for you on, behalf, uh, on your behalf by GeoQ. And it's information that's very useful for telling you know, where you're at with the project, how long projects are taking, and being able to use that to go uh, propose on projects. And one of the things you can actually do is you can look at your budgetary information. So if you go in, you've got a project boundary, you set up an index, uh, you know, you can drop in your budgeted effort and you can look at a project before you even begin and start to look at your numbers and see, you know, with that, with those counts and everything else, does it add up? Does it make sense based on what you're looking at? So you can kind of also get a kind of a test of that budget before you ever start to use it. And, and hopefully with enough history, you can uh, kind of look at that uh, before you actually make your bid on a project. And, and so I'm hoping these tools will give you a lot more options with uh, what you can do with the, with the information that's being reported to you. I think that's a, a good spot there for, for questions, Martin. Um, yeah, sure. There's, um, a couple of people asked here, uh, is there a way, let me see how, how I can rephrase these questions so it makes sense. Um, is there a way to see who worked on each tile? And I think the, the intent here is not the way you have where you've got the three you know, the different users, the amount of time, but who is the, the, the last person to work on a tile or to, to deliver the tile or finish the tile, I guess? Oh, okay, yeah. Let me, uh, let me just take my filters off on here. I'm going to go back into Report Builder here. And what we can look at is uh, not only last user, but we can look at kind of the last note made, the, the last machine it was on, those sort of things. So I can look at my last user and that becomes a, another column. And so if I wanted to see what user last was in particular uh, tiles, uh, I can take and, and filter by that um, to get that information. And again, uh, also, you know, if it wasn't clear before, whatever I, I touch it in Project Administrator, just like Entity Manager, uh, we're linking that up. So whatever you select here, whatever I add to the working set here, it automatically gets done in your map view as well. So it's kind of a, a way to, to move between the two pieces, right. kind of your list view and your map view again. And, and sort of a related question to that, is there a way to see that the, the day or the date that they finished that tile? I assume that's... I we've got that in here. Uh, yeah, uh, we got the actual completion date on there, so we can always add that into a report as well. So there's our, our, start, our start date, actual start date, and then actual completion date. So when that, that tile gets set to complete. So see, here are the ones that I got today. Here's the ones I did today. Today's 9-12. <laughs> okay, great. So, you know, as Derek was saying, I mean, our idea here, the concept here, is we want to give you a much more flexible reporting tool to take advantage of all of this information you know, all this information has been being tracked in GeoQ for, for many, many releases now. Uh, but by giving you these reporting tools, we want to uh, enable you to take advantage of, of pulling that information, querying that information. And the idea is, as Derek kind of walked you through here, you're, you're going to build a report, essentially a report template, uh, that's going to present the information you want to report on and, and that you need to, uh, to update. You're going to do that once, and then you just update that, just refresh that or limit it to, you know, the report for today or this week or this month, um, and it will automatically update and pull as, as you know, the production team is walking, uh, you know, working through the, the project. Uh, so we think it's going to be a great time saver over, you know, having to have people update their own spreadsheets or, or do some sort of, sort of offline tracking. And, of course, as, again, as Derek demonstrated, uh, the idea is you can always publish this out to a spreadsheet if you want to do some more sophisticated reporting or if you have to, you know, attach that spreadsheet to some weekly or monthly production report. So it, it, it really is a way to save some time and, and really start to take advantage of some of the, the information that are being, that's being tracked there in, in, the, in the database.